This is McFly Angler. starts now. To start, you will want a heavy shank saltwater hook like these Gamagatsu SL11s, and today I'm using a size 4. Place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I'm using Vivas 1040 Power Thread in hot pink. Start your thread about a hook eye gap from the eye of the hook, and then come down about this far and snip off the waist. Then build up a bit of a thread bump on the hook to place the dumbbell eyes on. For dumbbell eyes, today I'm using a size 532 in black. You want a fairly large dumbbell to get these down quickly, maybe about the size of the hook gap, and you can always check against the hook. Place your dumbbell on top of the thread bump and make X wraps and under wraps to secure it. Then make sure it's adjusted to directly on top and perfectly perpendicular to the hook shank. Then add a brush of super glue to further ensure that these do not spin. Now we need some material for the front feelers. I like this grizzly chickaboo from Whiting in pink. Pull off two feathers. Now we need to make sure that they are splayed outward like so. Then align the tips. And I find it's easier to tie these in when you wet them like so. Measure out about a hook gap length of the feather and tie it in slightly down into the bend of the hook and then snip off the waist. Clean up that area with a couple wraps. Now we need a little flash to accent the feelers. I like this midge size crystal flash and pearl. Pull off one strand and fold it in half to cut it into two pieces. Tie these in on either side of the feathers, extending out just slightly past the feathers. To do this, tie one side in, make a few wraps, and then pull the forward facing strands rearward and tie those in on the other side like so. Then snip off the far side to be the same length as the near side like so. Now we need some mono crab eyes. And I've done some videos in the past on how to make your own like these, but you can also buy them. I will link to the how to video in the description section and also where you can purchase these already made. As you can see, there is a natural curve to these from the mono. Tie this in on the side of the feathers with the curve angling outward. You want these to extend out about two thirds the length of the feathers. And as you can see, I'm pulling it rearward slightly to make them the right length. Then bend them out slightly and make a wrap under to keep them angling outward. Turn the hook around and tie the other eye in on the other side in the same way. And make sure these are extending out in even length. Pull them outward again and make wraps under them once more to ensure that they stay splaying outward. Then cut off the excess mono and then clean up that section with some wraps. Now we need some rabbit strips. For this color crab I'm using a blue barred rabbit zonker. You want to cut two pieces off with the hide about as long as the hook shank. Then cut a point into the tip of the hide for both strips. But make sure it's in the front part of the strip where the hair is naturally going in the direction of the point. Now strip off some of the fur off the back of the hide for a cleaner tie-in point. Bring your thread up slightly and then tie this in on one side of the hook like this with the tip of the hide extending slightly past the feathers. When you tie it in, the thread will want to rotate the strip around the top of the hook. Just move it back down with your thumb and make many tight wraps to lock it into place. Now as you can see, I tied this in on an angle upward, which is what you want. I find that it helps to wet the fur to keep it out of the way for tying in the next claw. Do the same thing with this claw, ensuring that it extends out the same length as the last one. Now that both claws are tied in place, make a few wraps to clean up the tie-in point and smooth out the transition from the hook shank to the claw bump there. Now we need some EP style fiber, or in this case I'm using Congo hair which is a little better priced version. And I find that the shiner tan and the light blue work great for this blue crab fly. 
Cut off about this thick of a section from the hank, then cut it in half and half again to make four equal length sections. Do the same thing with the other color fiber as well. Now lay the first color fiber on top of the hook shank, perpendicular to the shank like so, and then make an X wrap over the fiber like this. However, I find that wetting the fur once again on the claws helped to keep them out of the way and make tying these in much easier. Okay, once the X wrap is made, then pull the fiber side to side, and then forward up as far as you can close to the claws. Pull tight on your thread, and then pull the fiber forward, and make a few tight wraps up close to it. This tightens those X wraps and makes it so it won't pull out. As you can see, the fiber is in there really, really tight. Bring a thread down a few wraps and then do the same thing with the blue fiber. Laying it on top, make an X wrap, tightening your thread, and then wrapping up to the X wrap to tighten down everything. Note that these first two are the hardest to do since you have such a large bump from the other materials. The next few will be much easier. Now we need some rubber legs. I like these pumpkin and light blue colored ones. Pull off one strand. Now I would like the ends of these legs to be blue and the intersection to be pumpkin. So I'm cutting these in sections like so and we will need three sections of legs. Take one of the legs and tie it in in the center of the legs on top of the hook shank like this. And then pull one side back and tie down on the side of the hook. And the other section back on the other side of the hook so they stick out like this. Sometimes they'll want to rotate a little on you so just adjust them, but don't pull too hard or they will break off. Okay, now for another section of fiber. You will want to make sure and alternate colors like this. Tie this in in the same way as the last few. And just keep going down the hook shank, alternating colors of fiber, and every two sections of fiber add some rubber legs. You should end up using up all eight sections of fiber here and getting all three rubber legs in. If you don't, adjust the thickness of fiber pieces on your next fly. Okay, now that the body is tied in, we need to bring the thread up to the hook eye like so. Now I'm gonna add a weed guard. I'm using 25 pound stiff fluorocarbon here. Cut off a small piece and then fold it in half. And then use something sharp to crease the mono in the center. And then use some pliers to further crease it like so. Then flatten the end with the pliers like this to make it easier to tie in. With the hook point upward, place the mono guard on top of the center of the hook shank and make a couple wraps to tie it into place. Make sure, of course, that the mono isn't impeding the hook eye. And then we will bend the mono rearward like this and put a bit of a crease in it. Then pull the mono apart and adjust it so it will go on either side of the point like this. Now make a few wraps behind and under the mono to keep it angling upward. Before I whip finish, I like to cut the mono to get the excess length out of the way. Pull the mono guard back and then cut it so it's just shy of the length of the hook point. As you can see, the mono now will not impede the hook setting. Now you can whip finish, and I like to do this behind the weed guard. Then pull the knot tight and snip off the waist. To finish the tying portion of this fly, I like to add this ultra thin UV resin by Solares. The paintbrush applicator makes it easy to apply and it's thin enough to penetrate all the thread wraps. Paint a little on top of the hook, around the weed guard like so, and a little over the dumbbell eyes. And then cure it with your UV light. Now turn the fly over and paint some on the bottom of the hook, around the dumbbells, and then more on top and along the spine for a super durable crab. Then cure it again. Alright, now for the trickiest part of this pattern cutting it to shape. The silicone legs make this a tedious chore, but make sure you pull all the legs back and out of the way before cutting so you don't accidentally snip the legs. Like I said, this is difficult, and maybe even more so because I used extra short legs. Honestly, if you don't mind wasting some leg material, this is much quicker to do when the legs are long, so tie accordingly. Okay, once the legs are out of the way, cut a bit of a triangle down into the dumbbells like so. Separate the legs from the other side and cut a triangle on the other side in the same angle. Now the fiber makes a large kind of puff out at the edges here. 
so I like tapering down the edges, which will help it sit nicer on the bottom and give it a more natural look. Also when cutting this, sometimes the fibers get stuck to the legs. Make sure you cut all of the fibers even like so. Just brush it out, pull out the fibers, and keep trimming. Now we want to round out the front part here a bit. I mean, it's up to you if you want to keep it the same shape, but I like a more rounded crab. So cut a notch into the top here, and try not to cut the claws, and then round that out also. Okay, keep cutting and brushing out until you're happy with it. Just keep making sure that you're careful not to cut the legs or any parts that you don't want cut. Blue crabs have a little red in their claws, so I'm going to use a marker to mimic this. Honestly, these ad markers are a little too strong and can run a bit into the fiber, so a simple red sharpie I find works best. I color the tip of the hide and on the sides of it like this. Then up into the fur as well, like so. And do the same thing on the other claw as well. So after placing it down on a flat surface and inspecting it, I saw that it rests a little angled on one side. I'm going to fix this by cutting a bit more off the bottom of the fly on the side that rests upward. Okay, there we go. That rests flat. Okay, well your fly is now finished. These work great by sitting on the bottom with the claws angled upward in a defensive stance. And little jerks of the line will move this rearward and lift the front of the fly up slightly to look more like a crab defending itself. It does drive the redfish and other crustacean eaters crazy. So let me know in the comment section what you think of this fly. I mean, it's not my own pattern, but it is one I have purchased from fly shops and used with great success. Let me know if you've had any of the same success with this pattern or anything similar to it. As you all know, I have gotten you all discounts from both www.risenfly.com and www.dooliesflyfishing.com. Dooleys offers great prices on all of the name brand fly tying materials and Risen Fly manufactures their own hooks, rods, reels, and other gear for fly fishing. Their products are top quality, and best of all, they are priced very reasonably. Not only are the prices at these two shops great, but like I said, they are offering all of my subscribers a discount. So use McFly at checkout when ordering from either of these shops, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already great prices. I want to also thank all of my patrons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and more. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash mcflyangler to sign up today. I also thank all of you who share all my videos with your friends and your continued support by hitting the like buttons and subscribing. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.